Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I hope all of you are in good health and you are enthusiastic to learn something new. So let's begin today's current affairs without wasting any more time. But before that, it is very important for all of you to know that we have launched the live courses for RBS Abhi and Abad. So if you are really willing to try any of the courses which are available in the market, then do give it a try because the live courses are only for you and they have a special feature of doubt class. Apart from this, we have also launched the uh, mobile application which you can access and download from the Play Store. Okay, so the very first question which we are going to discuss in this video is the Directorate General of Training under the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship has launched the Bharat Skills Forum, a new feature to allow the sharing of books, notes, videos, a question bank, etc. for the skill learners. The forum has been launched on the Bharat Skills platform. When was the Bharat Skill platform launched? So here guys, the right answer is option D, 2019. Now, what has happened exactly? So let's discuss that in detail. First of all, I hope you have understood this point that the Director General of uh, Training, Directorate General of Training is an organization under the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship and recently it has launched this Bharat Skills Forum. Now, what is this forum? It is basically a special feature on the Bharat Skill platform only. Now, what is the Bharat Skills platform? Now look at this guys, this is your Bharat Skills platform and it provides the training to the ITI workers, the Industrial Training Institute's students as well as for the trainers. It is a learning portal. So here all kind of training modules are provided. Now with the introduction of the Bharat Skills forum, which is this forum, now the option of PDF sharing and downloading is also available and many more such features are provided on the Bharat Skills portal itself. So it is basically the Bharat Skills forum is basically an addition to the Bharat Skills portal and that is the entire news which you can read here. So this Bharat Skills forum is going to be a digital warehouse for skilling community by allowing the sharing of contents in various forms like handwritten trainers or trainees notes, PDFs, scanned copies or recorded videos in any language. Okay, so this is going to be the use of the Bharat Skills Forum. Now you would know this fact very, uh, uh, it's a very basic fact for all of you to know that apprenticeship or any kind of training uh, is very important for the ITIs, the Industrial Training Institute's uh, workers or basically the industry workers because uh, in the ITI institutes you learn various skills like operating a machine, like uh, you can say ma mechanic work, all of such works are tra give, uh, the training for them are given on the uh, forum, on the ITI uh, institutes as well as the Bharat Skills Forum. Now we are talking about the skills. So why not discuss about the various schemes uh, which have been launched by the Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship so far. Now before going into the schemes, I am going to ask you the name of the minister of this ministry. Do tell me in the comment section below. Now the schemes are the very first scheme of the ministry is the National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme. So it was launched in 2016 and it aims to promote the apprenticeship in the country by providing financial incentives, technology and advocacy support. So it is basically a very, uh, you can say, a basic scheme for the uh, floor workers, okay, the factory level workers because apprenticeship again is a very important, uh, you can say, training for the workers. Then we have National Skill Development Mission. From the very name itself, it is very clear. The purpose of this mission is to develop the skills of the unskilled and semi-skilled youth. And it was launched in 2015. Then we have PM Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Again in 2015, it was launched. And the basic purpose of this Kaushal Vikas Yojana is to provide the short term, free short term skilling courses and this is being done by providing the monetary support to the youth for the skill certification. Okay, so basically the training is provided, the skill certification is provided and above that the incentive, monetary incentive is also given to the students who are learning something new so that more and more students come and they learn something new. So that's the basic idea of this Kaushal Vikas Yojana. Then we have Sankalp scheme. Now under the Sankalp scheme, 
the first of all the very full form of sankalp is skills acquisition and knowledge awareness for livelihood promotion okay and this is an important full form do remember the full form of sankalp now 2017 is the year in which this scheme was launched and uh, you have sankalp and strike both of these schemes were launched simultaneously and both of them have been launched or uh, launched to boost the skill india mission now strive strive stands for skill strengthening for industrial value enhancement and it was launched again in 2017 because it was launched alongside the sankalp scheme and it aims to uh, it aims at improving the quality and market relevance of vocational training provided in the itis okay then we have udan scheme and guys this is the only scheme which is uh, you can say uh, specifically concentrated on one region of india and that is jammu kashmir now udan is a special industry initiative for jammu kashmir launched in 2011 to 12 and it aims to provide skill training and enhance the employability of the unemployed youth in jammu and kashmir so these were some of the schemes from the ministry of uh, skill development and entrepreneurship which uh, are important and i hope it acted as a recap for all of you to uh, remember all the schemes and if any of these schemes have not been prepared by you so far now so guys it is your responsibility to cover all these flagship schemes of the government okay moving ahead the question number 2 is which edition of the assembly of the international solar alliance will be organized in new delhi from october 17 to 20 so here guys it is going to be the fifth edition which will be organized very soon so what is the news the news is that the union minister for power uh, and new and renewable energy rk singh has unveiled the curtain raiser event to the fifth assembly of the international solar alliance in new delhi from this state and obviously it is not important for you to remember the curtain raiser event of course but the assembly in itself is important and the organization is important now on that occasion on the cur curtain raiser, uh, raiser event you need to know that india first of all the aim uh, first of all holds the office of the president of the international solar Assam, uh, alliances assembly so india is going to act as the president of isa in this assembly then uh, we all know that isa is an international organization headquartered in india it has 109 members uh, and signatory countries the combined signatories and or uh, you can say member countries the ratified countries then isa aims to attract investments of up to dollar 1 trillion in the so solar energy by 2030 and this is guys a very important statement from exam point of view so do remember this state now as far as the members of isa are concerned you can clearly see that uh, there are 90 countries which have signed and ratified the isa and there are 109 countries which have only signed the isa okay so that's important now coming to the third question which seems to be a bit lengthy question but at the same time important so ministerial dialogue of the us india strategic clean energy partnership will be held in the united states from october 7 to 12 this year the ministerial dialogue will be co-chaired by union minister of petroleum and natural gas and housing and urban affairs hardeep singh puri and us secretary of energy jennifer granholm the us iscp that is this us india strategic clean energy partnership was uh, launched based on the us india climate and clean energy agenda partnership 2030 so it is basically a part of another partnership so in which year was the us india climate and clean energy agenda partnership 2030 launched by india and us so here guys 2021 is the right answer now we have read the reason for which this question was made that is the ministerial dialogue of this uh, us india strategic clean energy partnership is uh continuing is in continuation at this moment of time and tomorrow it is going to end up okay now the ministerial dialogue will be co-chaired by india's petroleum and natural gas and housing and urban affairs minister hardeep singh puri and the us secretary of energy jennifer granholm and both of these names are important so if any of your examination is coming up then you surely need to remember these two names now coming to this 
partnership itself. Now, what is this partnership? So it was launched on the basis of the US-India Climate and Clean Energy Agenda Partnership 2030. Now, it was launched by the pres this US-India uh, Climate and Clean Energy Agenda Partnership was launched by Joe Biden and Narendra Modi at the Leaders Summit on Climate Change in April 2021. And the basic purpose of both these partnerships is to basically mitigate the climate change effects and to work uh, on the resilience. Okay, so how can they increase the resilience? So here we have the uh, five point uh, or you can say pillars of this partnership. First is responsible oil and gas pillar, power and energy efficiency pillar, renewable energy, sustainable growth, emerging fuels, technologies pillar. So these are the five pillars on which India and US are going to work so that they can increase their resilience against the climate change and work on improving the climate effects or climate change mitigation methods. Coming to the next question, what is the total corpus under the emergency credit line guarantee scheme for the civil aviation sector? Now guys, here the news is that the government has increased the Ministry of Finance, which is operating the scheme, which is implementing the scheme, has increased the corpus of the scheme, especially for this sector. So how much is the total corpus now? So the total corpus stands at 1500 crores. Now guys, what is the total corpus of this scheme? Now, after this addition, this is your question. Do tell me in the comment section below. Okay, so Ministry of Finance has expanded the scope of this scheme to enhance the maximum loan under the scheme. And now the corpus stands at 1500 crores for the civil aviation sector only. Okay, and earlier the uh, corpus was 400 crores. Now it has been raised to 1500 crores. The next question is, which bank has launched this smart wire online solution to help its customers carry out SWIFT-based invert remittances in a faster and hassle-free manner? So here, ICICI Bank is the right answer. ICICI Bank has launched this smart wire online solution to help its customers carry out the invert remittances. Okay, SWIFT is basically the code that is provided on every transaction so that the transactions can be tracked. Now, this facility will be available for both the NRIs and resident customers to undertake the remittance transactions. Okay, the transfers to the other countries. Sixth question is which bank has launched a special FD scheme named Shagun 501 that is Shagun Pansoek because we know that this Pansoek is a very uh, auspicious number. Okay, Pansoek ho gaya, ek so ek ho gaya, gyara ho gaya. So it is a very auspicious number in the Hindu, uh, you can say religion. So that is why Shagun Pansoek on the occasion of the Shera and Diwali. So this is this Shagun Pansoek scheme has been launched on the occasion of the Shera and Diwali and which bank has launched it. So it is Unity Small Finance Bank. So clearly the scheme offers a 7.9% interest rate for a period of 501 days. The next question is which bank has launched the ONDC sellers app? So here guys, IDBI bank is the right answer. So IDBI has launched this uh, application and along with this application, many initiatives have been launched by this bank. So firstly, this ONDC sellers app, the, app has been launched by the bank so that it can be uh, a very easy process for the merchants to onboard the open network for digital commerce platform. Apart from this, this bank has also launched the DGKCC platform for the digitization of Kisan credit card loan process. Now, I hope all of you remember this thing, remember this news that the Union Bank of India and Federal Bank, both of them have been chosen by RBI Innovation Hub to digitize the Kisan credit card. Now, in which states have these banks launched the digitized KCC on a pilot mode? This is your question. Do tell me in the comment section below. Okay. Now, the next pointer in this news is that IDBI bank has also upgraded its Go Mobile Plus application. Okay. For the senior citizens. Now, the statement in itself is not very important for the examination, but the bank and its application is important. So remember, the Go Mobile Plus is the application of IDBI. Now, related to the bank itself, there is one more news that is the government and LIC, which hold approximately 94 to 95% stake in this bank, both of these entities are planning to sell their entire stake 
in the bank okay so soon this bank is going to privatize so that was the news regarding this bank which is important for all of you to know so privatization of this bank is also going on it's because at this moment you know that a uh, majority of the stake is held by lic and the government and both of them are planning to sell it out to the general public or basically to the private players now coming to the next question which of the following is not a credit information company operating in india so i hope all of you are aware that there are only four credit information uh, companies in india so which one which one of these is not a uh, cic so it is ps if credit information services private limited now coming to the news what is the news rbi has asked or rather directed all the credit information companies to designate an internal ombudsman by april 1 2023 now guys this timeline is very very important for all of you to remember because this timeline can directly be asked okay so from this date onwards an internal ombudsman will be a must in the credit information companies to enhance the effectiveness of the grievance redressal mechanism so currently there are four cics which you can see here and in the option itself we have seen so credit information bureau india limited which is known as sibil equifax credit information services experian credit information company and your crif high mark credit information services ninth question is recently rbi governor shaktikant das has launched a new subtax uh, initiative to make supervisory processes more robust this application will act as the bank's advanced supervisory monitoring system which will help in improving the compliance culture in supervised entity like banks and bfcs and uh, etc so identify the name of the application here you have the five options out of which daksh is the name so daksh has been launched by the rbi in order to basically digitize the supervision program or you can say uh, in order to add an edge to its supervisory function this application has been launched okay why do we do the digitization why do we shift to the online platforms in order to make our processes work easy that is the basic aim behind uh, rbi is this move okay behind rbi is this daksh platform the last question is who has won the uh, sastra uh, ramanuja prize 2022 so this prize is given to the people who are expert in the field of mathematics okay ramanujam himself was a mathematician so this year this award has been given to yun quing yeah. now which country does this person belong to this is your question you have to tell me in the comment section below at present he is an assistant professor at the university of california sorry she is an assistant professor at the university of california and she has been recognized for her works in arithmetic geometry of modular curves and chimura varieties not at all important for all of you to remember the important part is that she is an assistant professor at the university of california so that is all for today guys i hope you have enjoyed today's class thank you so much for watching the video stay healthy keep learning